I'm your nurse on duty. I'm back for the continuations of the discussions on the nursing care plan. On my previous video, you need to check it first kasi nandun po yung mga discussions on the salient points, how we're going to fill up, how we're going to select, starting from the assessment, how we're going to prioritize, plan, nursing diagnosis, intervention, the rationale, and conduct the evaluation. So I focus on the congestive heart failure since yung mga nakapost ko pong videos Talking about congestive heart failure starting from the pathophysiology, nursing intervention, so that you will understand kung paano nagkakaroon ng mga manifestation or sign in symptoms and how we're going to attain the desired outcome. So let's start. So ito yung sample ng nursing care plan. Merong subjective at objective symptoms. So, yung subjective, pwede mo makuha through interview or anything na sinabi ng patient or immediate family kung, kung unconscious or kung bata ang patient. So, sample natin dito is, nangihina ako at madaling mapagod as verbalized by the patient. Yung objective, alam natin na ito yung mga symptoms na makikita or ma-assess mo sa patient. So, I choose patient with congestive heart failure. You can review or you can check first the video yung sa congestive heart failure pathophysiology, and congestive heart failure na nursing intervention para maintindihan mo kung paano nagkakaroon ng ganitong mga symptoms. So, yung objective symptoms na nandito is uh, respiratory rate na 32 per minute. So, ibig sabihin, above the normal. So, meron tayong takip niya. Yung pulse rate niya is 125. So, it's above the normal range. So, meron siyang tachycardia at normal temperature of 36.8 degrees Celsius. Yung BP niya is normal at ang kanyang auto-saturation is 95%. It's still with normal range. So, meron siyang dysrhythmias and since yung kanyang medical diagnosis, it is expected na, na i-ascultate mo yung lungs, i-ascultate mo yung kanyang heart. So, you can hear the murmurs. So, positive siya sa murmurs at meron siyang orthopnea or difficulty on breathing while ly lying on bed or flat at meron siyang crackles. That is one of the reasons kaya meron siyang orthopnea. Crackles and jugular pain distension is a sign of congestion. Same with liver engorgement. So you can assess the patient and these are the manifestations of patients with congestive heart failure in particular. Yung, yung jugular pain distension, liver engorgement, presence ng pedal edema. Ito yung mga symptoms na nag indicate that the patient is already having circulatory overload or congestion. Yung urine output niyan, less than 30 cc per hour. Ang computation niyan is, so that is 0.5 to 2 ml times the kilograms. Example, uh, 55 kilograms, ang ginamit mo lang is 0.5. So, kung 0.5 siya, so 30 cc per hour. So, sa ibang references na ang nakalagay is 30 to 50 cc per hour. So, minsan ang doctor's order, 50 cc per hour or 40 cc per hour. So, that is the formula and how you're going to check if it's still within the normal range. So, yung patients, meron siyang thready pulse in the peripheral system and pulses alterans. So, ibig sabihin, it, yung perfusions or your circulatory ng blood, hindi siya umaabot ng peripheral system. So, there could be a cold, clammy skin, ashken skin, signs of cyanosis. Pero, pero yung kasing cyanosis sa skin, very late siya nag appear Usually, you can easily assess or early signs na kikita siya sa oral mucosa. And diaporesis is the effect if there is lacking of fluid or nagkakaroon na ng fluid deficit because of lack of cardiac output reaching into the tissues and cells. So, ang sample ko sa nursing diagnosis is decreased cardiac output because that is the main cause or etiology kaya nagkakaroon ng congestion. Ibig sabihin, hindi sufficient yung lumalabas sa left ventricle na cardiac output na kailangan ng katawan ng tao. So, kaya nagko-compensate kaya makita mo yung kanyang pulse rate 125. So, himayin natin yung nursing diagnosis. Yung decreased cardiac output, yung sinasabi natin na nursing diagnosis. Meron tayong related to altered myocardial contractility. So, ang normal pulse rate natin or cardiac rate is 80 to 100. So, sa 80 to 100, hindi siya sufficient yung lumalabas na volume na cardiac output sa left ventricle. Kaya makikita nyo yung pulse rate niya is 125 or more. Ang tawag natin dyan, ginadjustify mo 
yung etiology or related factor kaya nasabi mo na meron siyang decreased cardiac output. Bakit nagkakaroon siya ng altered myocardial contractility? Doon papasok yung secondary 2. Pwede mo nang ilagay yung secondary 2 congestive heart failure. That is a medical diagnosis. Iba yung nursing diagnosis sa medical diagnosis. Ang nagbibigay ng medical diagnosis ay doktor. Ang nursing diagnosis natin ay pwede mong kunin doon sa nanda kasi yun yung standard. So, paano mo isusupport yung nursing diagnosis? Pag ginamit uli yung AEB or tinatawag natin as evidence by or as manifested by, isusupport mo yun sa objective and subjective manifestation ng patient. So, next is plan. Since meron ka na assessment, nakita mo na kung ano yung problema ng patient, nag-prioritize ka na, nag-diagnose ka na. So, gagawa ka ngayon ng plan. At nandun yung component kung paano ka gagawa ng plan or outcome. Sample, at the end of 8 hours of nurse patient interventions, the patients will demonstrate adequate cardiac output as manifested by acceptable vital signs and minimize symptoms of congestion. So, na-discuss na natin dun sa uh, nursing care plan kung paano siya gumawa at na-define na natin dito because this is the same example ng aking plan. So, naka-identify dito that yung patients is the subject and the verb is demonstrate and yung conditions and modifier mo, ano yung in-expect mo is to have the patient's adequate cardiac output. So, paano mo i-check at paano makikita if your desired outcome or performance or criterion is met or not met. So, ang in-expect ko magkaroon siya ng acceptable vital signs and minimize yung symptoms ng congestion. As you could see kasi sa signs and symptoms niya or sa assessment, it needs an immediate management. Ang congestive heart failure kasi is caused by the other disease or a complications of other disease. But if you want to be more specific, you can based on your plan, kung ano yung target mong pulse rate, ano yung status na gusto mong ma-reach, pwede yun. Ito yung sample naman ng student nursing care plan. So, anong kaibahan niya sa nursing care plan ng isang staff sa isang hospital? Kasi ang nursing care plan nagbabaris according to the policy ng isang agency. Pero pag nursing students, minsan may interference pa sila, pero lagi lang nandun yung rationale. Para matrain yung nurses or future nurses, kailangan alam niya kung ano yung mga ginagawa niya. What is the rationale behind? Bakit kailangan yung i-perform? form yung intervention. Kasi sa interventions, di ba sabi na evidence-based, patient-centered, and holistic approach. So, para ma-justify yung mga intervention mo, it's either independent, dependent, or collaborative management. Alam mo kung bakit siya ginagawa through rationality kay evidence-based intervention. So, hindi ko na-discuss yung three columns, yung assessment, nursing diagnosis, and planning. Let's focus with the intervention. So, sa independent intervention, nagbigay ako ng ilang nursing interventions. Pero sa actual, dapat mas mahaba ito. Dapat alamin mo muna ano yung cause or probable cause or yung etiology ng sakit na ito. So, monitor vital signs hemodynamic parameters. So, na-discuss na natin sa mga previous slides kung ano yung hemodynamic parameters. Ang rationale mo dito is to provide baseline and evaluate yung intervention, which includes the treatment. Next is, you need to place the patient in semifolars to promote yung ilang expansion and improve the range of motions ng diaphragm muscles. So, it provides proper ventilation. Administered supplemental oxygen by a nasal cantula, 2 ml per minute as prescribed. So, kailangan mo isulat kung ilang ml na nakaregulate sa patient. So, ang rationale nito is to increase metabolic demand and maintenance ng oxygenation. So, you need to auscultate the lungs and the heart and take note for areas for adventitious sounds or for any murmurs. Early assessment is very important. So, you need to assess for impending congestions or ineffective gas exchange if there's a presence of crackles that indicate that there is a fluid in the lungs or the cardiac output, the amount of 
fluids that you need to calculate and tissue perfusion. How we're going to do that is we need to check the peripheral system. We need to check for any signs of cyanosis to assess if the blood reaching into the peripheral system through capillary refill and autosaturation. So dependent intervention naman, I'm just giving you a few nursing intervention uh, para ma-justify lang kung paano kinagamit yung uh, tatlong intervention. Ang isang example dun is administer ka ng medications as prescribed or as ordered by the attending physician. So, hindi na yan independent or hindi mo kagustuhan. So, yung interventions mo, pinafollow mo lang yung doctor's order. So, ang rationality dito sa administrations of medication is to improve the cardiac functions and minimize untoward signs and symptoms. So, that is dependent. Pag collaborative naman, collaborating with other health team, you need to coordinate uh, for the prescribed lab works for the client. So, ang rationality, collaborations with other health team facilitate the prompt diagnosis and assessment of patient's condition. So, ito yung sample. Kailangan mo siyang i-evaluate after 8 hours. Met ba siya? Partially met? Not met? So, ilalagay mo dun sa evaluation kung partially met or not met siya. Bakit? So, you need to specify. So, sa evaluation, nakalagay ko is partially met kasi congestive heart failure is caused by complications of other pathologic disorder. Example, my partial infarction or a viral infection causing for an alterations or congestion. Hindi siya kaya ng 8 hours lang ma-address na yung kanyang mga objective manifestation. Uh, patient's vital signs as follow, yung pulse rate niya is 100 beat per minute, yung respiratory rate niya from 28, naging siyang 22 per minute, and still the patient is having moderate jugular vein distension and pedal edema. So it means that it needs to reassess and make another plan based on the existing abnormalities ng patient. So, pwede magkaroon ka ng revisit ng in order to address the problem ng patient. Sa evidence base, ang rationale ay nakaangkop sa isang research or it galing siya sa nanda kasi yun yung standard kaya nga tinawag natin siyang evidence base Ito yung sample ng intervention, administer supplemental oxygen, ang rationale, oxygen administration help to sustain metabolic demand and the need ng oxygen when treating lung conditions or yung patients na mga may impaired exchange and minimize symptoms of hypoxia from Willie et al. 2022. So, dapat nakalagay yung source kung sa anong link or source na kinuha mo yung uh, rationale, yung data. Sa focus charting naman, nakadivide siya sa four columns. Date and time, ito yung kinagamit sa mga hospital ng staff. Pag sinabi mo kasi focus charting or focus nursing care plan, very specific lang kung ano yung condition na kailangan mo i-address based on ABC. So, nakaligay ko yung date, November 21, 2022, at nilagay ko yung time kung kailan kong na-assess yung patient. So, based on ABC, an effective gas exchange related to accumulations ng fluid in the alveoli secondary to congestive heart failure. So, yung nursing diagnosis is an effective gas exchange. Ang etiology or contributing factor is accumulations of fluid in the alveoli and the medical diagnosis is congestive heart failure. So, sa progress note, nandun yung DAR or data, actions, and result. Sa data, receive patients with intact IBF or plain NSS 1 liter at KBO, which means keep vein open kasi hindi kailangan ng Patients sa may CHF ang maraming fluid kasi nakokongest. Patients stated or as per falais, nahirapan akong huminga with non-productive cough, respiratory rate of 27 per minute, and adventitious breath sound. Meron siyang mild cyanosis, ang autosaturation niya is below normal. Ang ABGPH 7.25 to 7.45, normal range 7.35 to 7.45. So since mababa, Ang pH niya ng 7.28, it indicates that there is a respiratory acidosis indicating that there are retention of carbon dioxide. So, inilagay ko yung date, ko yung time ng ABG kung kailan siya inandak. Kasi sa ABG dapat updated yung laboratory result. In the patient is having moderate pedal edema indicating that there is a congestion. Sa action, kailangan i-assess yung breathing pattern, yung lungs, at extent ng cyanosis. Note ng chest movement and occasional use of accessory muscles. So, makikita mo rin ito na dun yan sa nanda. 
So, you need to auscultate the lungs and place the patient in semifolars bago mo i-refer. You need to make necessary intervention as first aid or before ka mag-refer, dapat nakalagay ka na ng oxygen. Then, you just need to regulate based on the doctor's order. Closely monitored progress ng signs of hypoxia, administer medications such as diuretics, bronchodilator, mycolytic, as prescribed. Then, you need to monitor yung INO since may congestion at nagbigay ka ng diuretic. Educate patients on depth breathing exercise, splinting while coughing, minimize activity, and complete bed rest. So, usually, yung education or health education ng patients sa may lower part or later part ng intervention. So, sa result, since ma-base ka dun sa ABC airway, so, this is a priority. Dapat short plan siya. So, after 2 hours of nurse patient intervention, patients demonstrate improved airway clearance as evidenced by patient's respiratory rate of 22 per minute and no signs of cyanosis. So, after 8 hours at the end of the shift, I need to re-evaluate and assess the conditions of the patient. After 8 hours of nurse patient intervention, the patient maintains patent airway and improved ventilation as manifested by respiratory rate of 20, autosaturations of 96%, cardiac rate of 110 beat per minute, and moderate ankle edema indicates there is still a congestion. So, since CHF siya, it cannot be addressed immediately. So, continuous assessment, revisit of the plan, and make another diagnosis as indicate on its manifestation. So, it needs to reassess and make another plan for existing uh, signs and symptoms. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. This channel provides information, lectures, and discussion of different pathologic disorder. Disclaimer, intervention and management may vary according to the actual status of the patient, manifestations of the disease, and prognosis of each patient. So learn more, be efficient, and be an angel in the sick room. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I'm your nurse on duty. Until next time.